Yes, class. Good evening. So, who all have joined? Hamza, Hiba, Huzefa, Kulsum, Ritpat. All right. So, in the last class, we had completed till the revision of reflection of light. No, apparent depth, reflection, and refraction we had started. So, refractive index, we did it. Uh, let's quickly revise what was total internal reflection. Then we'll move on to the previous year's questions from it. So, see, in total internal reflection, two conditions I had told you, which are very essential for TIR to occur. One is angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle. And second, uh, the second condition is that the incident ray should move from the denser to the rarer medium. Right. So this phenomena in which ray of light that is traveling at any angle of incidence, but greater than critical angle. And that too from denser to rarer medium, this is totally reflected back into the denser medium only. And we call this phenomena as total internal reflection. Now, I have told you from total internal reflection, you will be getting difficult questions. So do practice it. We'll also practice it today, some of the questions. And especially from critical angles, you have lots of questions. What is critical angle? Critical angle is that angle of incidence in the denser medium only, for which angle of refraction in the other medium, that is the rarer medium, it becomes 90 degree. See, normally what happens when the ray is incident at this interface, rarer denser interface, the ray of light gets refracted. Then angle of incidence increases, ray of light gets increased. Similarly, at a certain angle, this angle arises where the refracted ray makes an angle of 90 degree with the normal. That is, angle of refraction becomes 90 degree. So that particular point, I hope I'm audible to all of you. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. So, a uh, critical angle is that particular angle at which refraction, angle of refraction in the other medium becomes 90 degree. After critical angle, even if one degree is crossed for critical angle, the ray gets totally internally reflected within the denser medium. So, from the theory part, this is just what you have to remember, class. You can get to write about total internal reflections and the conditions. In the test that we did, I think we have seen that question. So Snell's law will be applied completely for critical angle. Sin I will be 1 by NDR. So NDR means the refractive index of denser by refractive index of rarer. Fine. So these were some questions I think we had already seen in the class. Optical fiber. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's see the exam uh, applications of TIR. Then we'll move on to the question part. So one of the applications of TIR was mirage formation, right? It's an optical illusion that is formed when the layers of the ray or when the ray of light crosses the different layers of the atmosphere. Since these different, different layers have different, different values of refractive indices, we get totally internal reflected ray. So mirage formation, all these applications and a complete theory-based question can be asked in your exam, where you have to mention what is TIR, you have to explain the phenomena, write about critical angle, its condition, and as well as you have to mention the applications of TIR. Otherwise, what questions can separately come is the question on PRISM how to reflect it by 90 degree, how to reflect it by 180 degree, or you can get the question from optical fibers specifically. Optical fibers, one of the question is there in your NCRT in text as well. So uh, brilliance of diamond is also one of the applications that the light keeps on getting totally internally reflected each time it strikes the surface. Right, so when it strikes it, it gets reflected. Again, it strikes, it gets reflected. So it's like the light is trapped within the diamond. So since this, this ray of light keeps on moving within the diamond, finding its space to move, we see brilliance of diamond. The sparkling of diamond that we see, it is just because of refractive index is high and because of a very small critical angle. So this critical angle is around 27 degrees for a diamond. No need to remember the values of critical angle. Critical angle's value. And uh, yes, you can remember the value of critical angle for reflecting prism. That is 42 degrees. Right. So these two prisms can be asked to you. Reflecting light ray by 90 degree and reflected reflecting light ray by 180 degrees. Then you have optical fibers. Optical fibers are also involved. So we did a numerical also. That numerical is very important. Which question that we had seen. Otherwise... 
completely this topic at TIR is important by itself only. Uh, let's practice some questions, one or two questions that have repeated themselves in the board exam. Try it yourself and I'll discuss it with you.
see any answers question says a point source of light s is placed at the bottom of a vessel containing a liquid of refractive index 5 by 3 find refractive index is 5 by 3 so source of light is there i'll make the diagram side by side here is a source of light fine so there is an opaque disc of radius 1 cm floating above the surface here like this this will be the disc the center o of the disc lies vertically above s it means this is point o because this is lying exactly vertically above the source s the liquid from the vessel is gradually drained out through a tap you have to find out what is the maximum height of the liquid for which the source cannot be seen at all see if the source emits light rays like this if the source is emitting light rays this will be the path of it it will go through the margin right because it will be totally internally reflected reflected here here this is let's say some h height i have assumed this os is some h height i'm writing here separately as well oh is some h height all right so o is the point that is lying vertically above s is the source of it so here also tir is occurring tir here is occurring now see if tir is occurring then it will be critical angle the angle that will be formed will be the critical angle now if you take out the value see this is r i am drawing the triangle separately look here this is the radius r just this part this is h now if i have to find out sin i sin i will be see this part let me name this as o this as a this oa that is the radius right by os by as this part by as so this part is what this part will be if you apply simple pythagoras theorem under root r square plus h square so sin i this will be r by okay. under root r square plus h square now refractive index is not mentioned to you know refractive index so let us assume 1 by mu or 1 by nu let us assume the refractive index so apply snell's law over here sin i you have r by under root r square plus h square now apply snell's law if you apply snell's law sin i will be 1 by mu it means this equation is also equa equating you to sin i this equation also equ is equating to you sin i so it means you can equate both the equations 1 by mu is r by under root r square plus h square now we just have to simplify this no no square we just have to simplify simplify this so wherever you are seeing the roots just square it on both the sides if you square it this will be 1 by mu square is equal to r square by r square plus h square now so r square plus h square will be mu square r square or from here uh, let's take h square will be mu square r square minus r square take r square common from here if you take r square common that makes it mu square minus 1 right if you take r square common mu square minus 1 take root because we do not need h square what do we need we just need h we need r we need mu we do not need the squares of all these terms so that will make it h is equal to r under root mu square minus 1 right now see the refractive index you have that is 5 by 3 and radius is also given 1 cm just these two information were provided to you now you have the relation radius is 1 cm this will be 1 refractive index was 5 by 3 so 5 by 3 whole square minus 1 that makes it 25 by 9 minus 1 which is 25 minus 9 by 9 so 4 by 3 because that will be 16 by 9 under root that will be 4 by 3 so 4 by 3 is 1.33 cm this is the height see how did we put it refractive index you have radius you have so you just had to establish a relation between the refractive index radius and the height so this is the only possible relation 
Now, once you put in the values, you get 1.33. Note it down wherever you are having any issues, any difficulty. Text me in the chat column or directly unmute yourself or ask. Start noting it.
All right, now class. Next is spherical refracting surfaces. So TIR almost all the questions we had completed earlier as well. One or two was left that we had discussed it today. Now from spherically refracting lenses, the so main thing firstly before beginning with the lens part, we have to understand refraction from spherical surface before we move on to lens part. So we did this refraction from rarer to denser medium and refraction from denser to rarer medium. So in both of these, you have to apply your own sign convention. If object distance is coming negative, you have to put it as minus only, though minus is already given in the formula. All right. Then for image distance, same thing. If image is virtual, you'll put it as positive. If you think, if you're getting the image as inverted or you're getting it in front of the mirror, you'll put the image distance also as negative. According to the question, you will substitute the sign conventions. So this one n1 by minus u plus n2 by v is equal to n2 minus r, um, n2 minus n1 divided by r. This is for rarer to denser. Now, if you have from denser to rarer, this is the same derivation. And class, any of these derivation can be asked. Though we discussed the previous one, same way, just draw the opposite diagram because you have to substitute the values of alpha, beta, and gamma. So here the formula becomes N2 by minus U plus N1 by V, and it becomes N1 minus N2 by R. All right. Uh, let us practice some questions. Some we did, some let us practice.
yes, so only Kulsum has given the answer and her answer is correct. Let us discuss it. Question says a sunshine recorder, globe of 30 centimeter diameter. This is made up of glass of refractive index 1.5. Array enters the globe parallel to the axis C. Now, array of light enters parallel to the glass of refractive 1.5. So, it is parallel to the axis. This is parallel to the axis. So, it means the array of light this has entered this globe somewhat like this. All right. Now, see what will happen. The ray of light has entered. This will get refracted at this particular point. Again, it will get refracted. And if you produce it here, you will obtain the image. Let's say this is an intermediate image. Name this is, this is the center of curvature. This is the first pole. This is the second pole on the principal axis. This is some A point. This is some B point. This is from the source of light. This is coming. You have to find out the position from the center of sphere where the ray crosses the axis. This will be what you just have to find out the value of this net distance of I from the center. This you have to find out, no, distance of I from the center of the sphere. So see, mu1, this is 1 because it is air and for air, I've told you we take it 1.5 only. Mu2 is 1.5. Mu2 is 1.5. Object distance is minus infinity because this is parallel. So, object distance is minus infinity. And radius of curvature 30 by 2, that is 15 centimeters because diameter is given. So, radius will be, radius of curvature will be 15. Now, apply it mu2 by v, um, v minus mu1 by u. This will be mu2 minus mu1 by r. Why did I use this formula, this particular? Because ray of light is entering from rarer to denser. Now substitute 1.5 by V. Um, let us write it as V dash only because this is not the final image. Minus 1 by infinity. This is 1.5 minus 1 by 15. So V dash is 1.5 into 15 by 0.5. This will be around 45 centimeters. So this we have obtained. Now this was at this particular point one refraction occurred. Here also, no, the ray, the, the ray of light is moving from the glass to the air, from the denser to the air. Again, refraction will occur. So now when you substitute the other formula, see here this will be mu2 by v minus mu1 by u. No, this will be mu1 minus mu. This will be mu1 by v minus mu2 by u. And this will be mu1 minus mu2 by r. So substitute, this is the final value of v which we have to calculate. Minus, this will be again 1.5 divided by 15 is equal to 1 minus 1.5 and radius of curvature minus 15. So once you solve this, 1 by v will be how much? Here only 1 by V when you write this will be 2 by 15, right? 7.5. This will be 7.5 centimeters. So you already have 15 and additional you are getting 7.5. See, this is 7.5, this part. This is 7.5. So from the center, you have to calculate. From the center, you have to calculate. So the radius was 15. So total will be 15 plus 7.5. That will be 22.5 centimeters. This is the final answer. All right. Total will be CP2 plus P2I. Right. So 15 plus 7.5, which is 22.5 centimeters. I'll write it at this part at the end only. Note down any difficulties, any doubts. Ask me. We'll practice some more questions from this topic.
what curvature must be given to the bounding surface of refractive index 1.5 for virtual image of an object in the medium of mu is 1 at 10 centimeters to be found at a distance of 40 centimeters. See here, object distance that is given is minus 10 centimeters. Image distance is given as minus 40 centimeters. A refractive index 1 is mu 1 is 1 and mu 2 is 1.5. Mu2 minus mu1 by R is equal to mu2 by V minus mu1 by U. Now put in the values 1 by 5 minus 1 by R. This is equal to 1.5 by minus 40 plus 1 by 10. This is equal to 2.5 by 40 which will be how much? 25 by 400. No? So 16, 1 by 16. So radius of curvature will be 0. 0.5 into 16. That will be 8, no? 8 centimeters, right? Now see, R is positive class. Look here. The refractive index is positive. Uh, minus 16 and 24 centimeters. Good, Kulsum. Correct answer. So only Kulsum could answer. So, 8 centimeters. Now, see, R is positive. Refractive surface is concave. So, when you will calculate the power, it would be mu2 minus mu1 by R simply. That is 1.5 minus 1 by 8, which will be 0 0.5 by 0 0.08 meters. We have to always convert it into meters for power. Understand at this point because the SI unit is diopter. And that is 1 by f in meters. So this becomes 6.25 diopters. Now principal focus 1 if you calculate. That is mu 1 r by mu 2 minus mu 1. That makes it uh, 8 by 0.5. So minus 16 centimeters. And same way with f2. Mu 2 by r by mu 2 minus mu 1. This is 1.5 into 8 by 0.5. So that makes it 3 into 8. This is 24 centimeter. That's how we'll calculate this. Now we have some questions left on lens also from refraction that we'll see after this. Lens, some questions on lens. So question you all have written, note down the solution.
now let us uh, see the formula lens maker formula so 1 by f this is mu 2 by mu 1 minus 1 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 this is lens maker formula based on this let us practice few questions that have come in the previous year.
See, a biconvex lens has a focal length 2 by 3 times the ratio of curvature of either surface. Now, see, you have to calculate the refractive index of the lens. So, focus, uh, focal length is 2 by 3 times the radius of curvature. R1 is R. So, R2 will be minus R. Why R2 will be minus R? Because it's a biconvex lens. So, 1 by F, this will be mu minus 1. 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2. Now, if you put in all the values, 1 by F. So, that will become 3 by 2R, right? And mu minus 1. So, mu minus 1. Mu, we have to find out. 1 by R minus minus 1 by R, that becomes plus. So, 2 by R it is. 3 by 2R is equal to mu minus 1 by 2 by R. See, R, R gets cancelled. 3 by 4 is equal to mu minus 1. So, mu will be 1 plus 0 0.75, which is 1.75. Understood? Yes or no? Yes. All right, now all those who have completed, you can leave. We'll continue rest of the portions on Tuesday now. So, ray optics will be completed on Tuesday. Then we'll do wave optics. All right, thank you so much, class. Thank you, ma'am.